All right, now that we have both of our end assemblies uh, completed, we have both the belt tensioner side and the end, uh, the drive end uh, uh, assemble. We're gonna set the tensioner aside. We're gonna go ahead and bolt the drive assembly to your sliders. So what we wanna do now is we wanna grab, we should have, you should have in your kit four, uh, excuse me, 1024 um, socket head cap screws. I'm gonna go ahead and put the number 10 washers on. And of course, you should have a IGUS B version, 1080B, which is gonna actually have the tapped holes here. If you, if you're, if you have the A version and your holes are not tapped, um, we'd highly recommend that you tap them. Of course, this will make the whole assembly much easier and actually will make it work. So, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, you can see here, we've got two holes here, those are gonna line up. So we're gonna go ahead and put our first screw in like this and, and press that on. We won't tighten that up all the way. We've got our second group here, our second screw with washer. Just align that up. So you can see here, those are the holes that you want to line in. It's, it comes pretty low to this, uh, the hole that the, the belt runs through. So now we're gonna take our hex and tighten this up. Tighten this side up. And this side, right like so. That nice and tight, got a good thick washer on there, a good broad washer. You can really crank down on that pretty good. Just make sure they're both tight here. All right, and that is how your drive slide should be. And of course, our pulley is still loose, which uh, um, that's perfectly fine. You'll see how we'll tighten it up a little bit later once we slide the belt through. So this is how your assembly should look so far on the drive side. Now let's flip our slider over, so I don't hit anything here, for the belt tensioner side. So of course we grab our belt tensioner side, we basically do what we just did, the drive mechanism, grab them here, slide these through, and line that up. Kind of hard to hold everything at one, one time. Okay, there we go, get that side in. Right through, grab this washer and 1024 bolt, put that through, and tighten these up just like so. And like I said before, you can really crank down that pretty good. There we go, now we've got our belt tensioner side. So next we're going to show you how to attach your belt to either side to your main center plate. That's coming up next. The next step in putting our IGUS slider together is actually we're going to go ahead and begin running our belt through. And so in order to do that we're going to actually run our belt under the center plate and we're going to bring it towards the motor in first. I need to move some of these parts out of the way here. So we're going to run it through the back side of the motor here, right along the pulley. So now you can just like so. Now we're going to go bring it, go ahead and well actually let's back this out just a little bit. Let it set right there. What we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to go ahead and tighten up this pulley here that we had left loose before. Grab our Allen here. And you're gonna actually wanna take that pulley and run it all the way up against the uh, shaft coupler. And once again, I can't stress enough that to tighten that on the flat of the shaft, just like so. Go ahead and tighten that up. So that way, it's just about, you can kinda eyeball it. You might not go all the way up against it, but pretty darn close. Basically, it's just a matter of getting your pulley uh, right directly in the middle of the channel from the, from the top to the bottom. So. Go ahead and tighten that up. I'm gonna make sure it's nice and snug. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and grab our belt and run it behind the pulley, just like this. Like so, pull all the way through. And now we're gonna come back the other side, just like so, just about like that. And we're gonna bring it about, oh, about halfway down the slider, right around like that. Next, we're gonna go back to our other end, our tensioner end, 
and basically do the same thing, slide it in. And this some kind of, sometimes can get a little bit tough. Sometimes what you'll have to do is you have to come in here. You may have to poke it a little bit with a screwdriver or your Allen to kind of get it to go around the pulley. Just like so. And now you can pull it all the way through. Bring it back around. Now you can go ahead and pull your belt all the way through. Just like that. So now it should be going around your pulley. Just like that. You can see how your tensioner works there. So now we're going to come just about to the middle of your slider. So now you have both ends just like this and you can kind of pull it directly so basically line that up just like so. So they, they shouldn't touch, they should be pretty close, probably about an inch apart um, depending on how you have your adjuster down at the right end down here. So now we're going to go ahead and use our black Delrin pieces here and all of our pieces right here to go ahead and attach our belt to your plate. And what we want to do now, as you can see here too, one, note, one thing to note is your slide should move obviously back and forth pretty smooth uh, without any binding. Um, and you've probably played around with your slider long enough to tell that, you know, however you get these screws in, there's some slight adjustments. You kind of maybe have to wiggle a little bit and then tighten it to get it, to get it nice and smooth. So we're going to go ahead and take all these bolts out now. The threads on these things are pretty long, so it might take you a little while. Set those off to the side. There we go. And last four. As I'm doing this, uh, as you can tell, this whole kit is basically made up of our brand new Actobotics product line. Um, we designed this entire line to be extremely versatile and be adaptable to other products that are on the market. Um, so to be able to do projects such as this is very, very easy. And the cool thing about our Actobotics line is now that you'll, once you have this slider done, all of our products and all of the other Actobotics components will bolt to this. So if you want to make this slider rotate around or put wheels on the end and make the whole thing motorized so the whole slider would move as well. The, the different types of shots you can get by starting to modify the slider is, is just absolutely awesome. So, but anyway, but now we've got these screws out. Um, what we want to do next is bring this belt together like so. And now we're going to start stacking these parts together. As you can see here, this has the shape, it's cut out for the shape of the belt. Basically, you've got two of them that are the same here, just like so. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this, start it the first one right here, and you're gonna slide that through. And we can just work on one side for the time being. Kinda have to finagle the belt in there, because don't worry, I mean, this process is it's pretty easy, but you only have to do it once, so. And of course, the other side, I'm gonna bring this through as well. Of course, you want to have your tensioner down here on your right side down here loose so you can uh, easily grab the belt. So now that's the way it should be right here. So you've got your belt sticking out the top section right here. So now that you've put your belt in, that's what it should look like here. And you should see your belt. You've got about an eighth inch left sticking up on this end and that's where your last plate comes into play. You can see here you've got eight of the holes that are countersunk. Those need to go toward the top. So we'll go ahead and Oops, as I turn this around this way, put it in like this, slide that in. So now the total thickness of this should equal your belt. So you can see your belt goes all the way through every single groove right there. Now it's locked in place. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our little stainless steel parts here, put those on the back side, but we're going to go ahead and, oops, sorry, let me flip this around this way. All right. There we go. Sorry about that. The countersunk holes actually need to be facing toward the top. So that way you can actually run your bolts through just like this, your countersunk bolts. So next we're going to go ahead and put our bolts in like so. 
I can find my Phillips screwdriver. There we go. I'm going to bolt those in. What this basically is going to do is going to keep all these plates together. Put them all in one side. We're not going to tighten the holes down, or excuse me, the screws down on this side quite yet. So we get them all in now. Make sure your belt is all the way down flush there and against the stainless steel part right here. And now we're going to go ahead and tighten these down. Just like that. And we're going to do the exact same thing on this side. Stainless steel part on the bottom side. Your longer 632 screws here. Go through the holes. Countersink side, countersunk side, I should say. And all four of them get put in. This creates an extremely strong um, assembly that will not pull out, not allow the belt to pull out. So now we're going to go ahead and tighten all four of them down here, just like so. Check them all one more time. And there you go. That's what you should have right there. Of course, this is going to go down on this part just like so. We'll do that next. And of course, you want to make sure you keep your belt kind of loose on your either end. Of course, keep your tensioner nice and loose. So scoot this up a little bit. So now what we're going to do is we're going to line your slides up just like so. And two of them go on this side, one on either side because your plate actually has a slight indention in it right here. that allows us, we have to be able to kick that plate up just ever so slightly. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put one on either end here, but over here we're going to actually raise it up too in order to keep everything correctly spaced. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put two of them on this side. And this part gets a little, a little uh, difficult to do, but it's not too bad. So we're going to go ahead and put two of them on this side, run it over here, tighten those with your fingers, line up the next group of holes like that. Tighten that up, grab two more slides, line them up on this side, slip them under the plate. Grab the other two screws and we'll run these down a little ways, not too far. one plate in and it's not going through the hole all the way so slide that up there we go you know I haven't tightened them all the way I'll go ahead and show you so that way you should have two plates here one two and two plates right here just like that nice and flush on that end and of course now we have our plate right here we're going to put these on top of your plate here. So as you can see your plate right here, these are going to rest on top. So we're going to go ahead and drop these in just like this. Line those up. We're almost done, getting very, very close. This is actually probably the, the hardest step right here just because it's with two hands it can be a little a little difficult but not too bad and now we're going to put our last one in just like that once it's done you won't have to do any adjustments anything like that use our screw here to kind of line that guide that hole up the last one in run these down now what we we'll want to do is just kind of barely tighten these down because what we're going to want to run this slide back and forth manually just to make sure it doesn't bind up anywhere. And of course, we're not going to be able to run it very far either direction, but just enough to be able to make sure that it's um, not sticking too tight. Of course, you know, slides that don't, don't have ball bearings on them, anything like that, you know, you're going to have a little bit of uh, friction, but that's actually pretty good, not too bad. The motor, depending on the motors you choose as well, if you, if you, if obviously if you choose a low RPM motor, you know, even if you do have some drag, it won't matter whatsoever. Just that the drag, make sure the drag cons is consistent along the whole length of the slider. But just make sure you can move it back and forth. Um, if you can, you can go ahead and tighten these down and you want to kind of 
tighten them as you go along the way and then we're going to want to check it one more time because once you tighten these down sometimes things can still bind up a little bit so you don't you don't have to tighten them down too tight you can see there that's a little bit too tight and we want to come back in just loosen not not too much just a little bit um, and we're going to kind of wiggle it a little bit kind of wiggle it this way just to make sure let it kind of set and now we can go back through and sometimes like I said you're going to have to do this maybe one or two or maybe even three times we'll see here um, because the tolerances on the slides are so tight um, that it's difficult now that's much better so now we can really kind of come back through and, and tighten them up but once again these aren't, aren't that critical they're resting on the Delrin plates would have a little bit of give to them and so you know, the screws won't back through so that's much much better right there so now that we've got this whole system loose and kind of pull it, pull it either way your belts are loose so now what we're going to do is go ahead and tighten this up make sure that your belt is around your pulley on this end just like so of course you're going to make sure that it is around your pulley on this end now you can just start rotating your finger screw and as you can see here as I do that this belt is getting nice and tight now depending on your application obviously you can see here I can grab that belt and just kind of move it back and forth you can adjust obviously the tight how tight it is you don't want to go too tight you're gonna to have to play around with that a little bit as well depending on the camera you've got things like that um, and obviously the RPM of the motor if you've got a, a motor that doesn't have a lot of power you might have to run this belt a little little uh, uh, not nearly as tight but you can tighten it down pretty good uh, you want to be able to tighten it down where you know you can move it back and forth but you know this is not going to really have any play at all um, and so we're going to tighten it just one more turn just barely a turn there so that's pretty tight right there so now you can see it has really has no play whatsoever and of course the amount of play this is going to move back and forth depends on the quality of your gear motor and the the gears and with in your gear motor depends on how you know if this wants to rotate any backlash in your gear motor so if you go with a good quality gear motor whether it's a, a Maxon brushless or a Micromo or one of our precision gear motors or even our 3 to 12 volt gear motors um, you know the, the backlash is going to be very very minimal so but now your slider is done um, so that is the kit for the 1080 slider 1080B I should say um, it works extremely well now all you need to do is depending on the controller you want to put on it and next I'm going to at the end here on uh, another video two other videos excuse me I'm going to show you some options for the end um, that I think will be very helpful some switch mounts and some feet so anyway there you go your slider is done and uh, you're ready to take uh, some cool video